Python is one of the world's most popular programming languages. It can be used for almost anything, from web development to data science to machine learning to even automating your entire life. Google uses Python to power its search engine, Instagram uses it to personalize your explore page, and Netflix uses it to recommend movies and TV shows. The versatility, readability, and huge community of Python programmers makes it an excellent programming language. But I don't know it. I've never written a single line of Python code. But today, I'm going to be taking a Python test. Why? Well, I just want that sweet LinkedIn skill badge to put on my profile, and then Google will want to hire me. And just for some context, I'm going into this test with some experience in Java, JavaScript, C, and Racket, but I know nothing about Python. So without further ado, let's get into the test. Python. All right, so this test has 15 multiple choice questions, one and a half minutes per question, and I need to get in the top 30% if I want to get the badge. So let's start. What the heck is PEP coding? Oh my goodness. How should constant values be named in Python? Ah. Uh, Python, Python. Okay, well, I know in Java we use camel case. In C, we use snake case. These are for constants. I don't think this makes sense. Um, Python, what would Python use? <sighs> okay, Python, I think it's like C. I would say it's more like C. I've heard Python is like built from C. So I would guess it uses what C uses, which is this. Yeah, okay, whatever. I don't want to make this video too long, so I'm going to try to do these questions quickly. Default dict? Oh no. Uh, okay, I think it's a default dictionary. Um, if default dict will create a new key for you. Default dict stores a copy of a dictionary in memory, so you can default to... Oh man, I don't even know what these are saying. Where's the dictionary only accept keys that are... Default. Let's think what default means. This sounds like default, right? Like integers with 0 to 10. Forces the dictionary to only accept keys that are of the data type we specified. Stores a copy in memory. Man, I have no idea. If you try to act, that's a key in a dictionary that does not exist. The default they will create a new key for you. That doesn't sound like a default thing. Stores a copy. Hmm. Only accept keys that are. I. Okay, I'm gonna go with C because when you're in doubt, you choose C. Named a tuple. Um, a generic object class with non-iterable name fields, a tupled subclass. Okay, these all kind of look the same, just with the words switched up. What does calling named tuple on a collection type return? Okay, I seriously have no idea. I'm drink some water. Um, man, named a tuple. Is it a generic object or a tupled subclass? And are the fields iterable or non-iterable? <laughs> I have no idea. I feel like a name tuple would be a tuple subclass, and I just gotta choose if it's iterable or non-iterable. I'm gonna go with non-iterable because it starts with n and name tuple starts with n. What is the term used to describe items that may be passed into a function? Okay, well this is obvious. Wait, unless it's not. Like in most programming languages, I'm pretty sure it's called an argument. Decorator, okay, I'm just gonna go with that. I feel like these other ones don't make sense. What is the correct syntax for changing the price to 1.5? Dang it. Okay, let's see, syntax stuff. My list, my list, what's my list? There's no my list here. I feel like these won't make sense. Uh, I feel like it's gotta be either these two. Fruit info price. This looks like it could make sense. Yeah, this, this, this looks like the most plausible thing because what's index 3.5? And there's no my list thing. And this is a equality operator, not an assignment. Yeah, this, and then these are the same, but swapped. And then you're setting this equal to this, not vice versa. So, okay, 
What's the correct syntax for adding a key to the dictionary? Oh man. Add a key to a fruit info dictionary. So it's gotta be one of these two. Add a key, the key is called variety. And then the value is red delicious. Oh, and it's gotta be this one because this is equality. What is a generator return? I don't know, what is a generator? Generator probably generates something. A linked data structure from a non-empty list. All of the keys of the given dictionary. An iterable object. Generator, generator, what would a generator do? Um, I feel like D kind of makes sense because you're generating something from something else, but it could also be none. Link data structure from a non-empty list, generator. You generate a data structure from a non-empty list. Yeah, that could be possible. But it could also be generating an object. I feel like it's not C, all the keys of the given dictionary. Generate, what would you generate? A generator. Oh man, a generator, generator. What would you generate? Hey, I'm gonna go with my initial gut, which was D. What is the correct syntax for creating a variable that is bound to a list? A variable that is bound. Okay, I feel like it's not this. Actually, it might be, I don't even know. Oh, okay. Okay, this doesn't look like it makes sense. I feel like you would have to use square brackets if you're gonna make a list or like an array or something. Could be this. What's creating a variable that's bound to? I feel like this makes sense. I don't think a to list function exists because I'm pretty sure you'd just be able to like create a list like this. I don't think you need a function for that. I'm gonna go with that. Oh no, where's the next question? Hello? Hello? It just stopped working technical issues. I can't click next. Oh man, it just stopped working. Oh, okay, it's back. What built-in data type is used to represent a stack? Stack, okay, I know what a stack is. I don't think a dictionary makes sense. I don't think a set makes sense either. You probably have to use a list, but you might also have to make it from scratch. Are stacks built in to languages, are they? I know in C, you'd have to implement a stack yourself. And probably in Java too. Can you, are there built-in stacks in Python? I'm gonna go with a list, just because I don't think dictionary or set makes sense to implement a stack. Oh, can you build a stack from the list? Or I mean, can you build this? I mean, what am I even saying? Do you have to build a list from scratch? Python, I feel like Python would have a lot of built-in stuff, so I'd say list. What's the proper way to write a list comprehension that represents all the keys in this dictionary. What? A list comprehend? Oh man. What the heck? Fruit names equals. Okay, you wanted it to be a list, so I feel like you would need these square bracket things, because I think that's what, I don't even know. X, okay, let's look at these. X for X in fruit stock keys. X in fruit stock keys for X. What? Is, <laughs> what is this syntax? X, uh, X in fruits dot keys for X. Oh man. Okay, what seems the most logical? If it's a list, I feel like you need the square bracket, so it could be B or D. X for X in fruits.keys. I feel like B makes more sense because you have X for each X in the fruits.keys versus D, which has X in fruits.keys for X. I feel like the B one sounds more correct, so we'll go with that. Set versus list. Set is unordered, a list is ordered. A unique, okay, sets I know are unique items. Uh, I don't think they are ordered, so they're probably unordered. Um, a set is unordered unique, and a list is ordered non-unique. Yeah, what's B though? Elements can be retrieved from a list, but they cannot be retrieved from a set. Mm, I'm pretty sure you can still get elements from a set. I'm gonna go with A. Yeah. What are attributes? Oh, we saw this earlier. They were like, there was that question that was like, 
What are the things that you pass into functions? Attributes. What are attributes? I feel like attributes. Okay, let's read what the options are first. Function arguments. Mm. Strings. That's possible. Characteristics. Attributes. Synonyms. Attributes are a way to hold data to describe a state. Ooh, a long form version of an if else. Okay. I feel like it's actually not B because I feel like that's too simple. Um, function arguments are called attributes in the context of class methods and instance methods. That's plausible. Um, attributes are a way to hold data or describe a state for a class. Okay, I'm getting... So if two of the options are about classes or instances, then it's got to be either A or C. Yeah, so it's either A or C. Um, way to hold data or describe a state for a class or an instance of class. Hmm. I feel like this one makes sense because of that question that we saw with the... What are the names of the stuff that you pass into functions? Uh, attributes was one of those options. So that would imply... Oh, time expired. Next. Anyways, that would imply that it's related to function arguments. Okay, what is true about class methods? Class method holds all the data of a particular class. It can modify the state of the class, but it cannot modify the state of an instance that inherits from that class. Okay, I said I had some experience with Java, but when I learned object-oriented programming in grade 12, I think we spent like a week on it, and that was two years ago. So I don't even, I barely remember anything from that. Um, usually the longest answer might be correct. So I'm gonna go with that first, but let me read these other options first. A regular function, I don't think it's a regular function, but it cannot modify the state of an instance. Yeah, I'm just gonna, I don't really wanna read these options anymore. I'm gonna go with the longest option. What is the correct syntax for creating a variable that is bound to a set? Ah, dang it, dang it, dang it. Okay, I don't think it's this one because if these three options all require like a set function. Is it two set, set, or two set? <laughs> two set, okay, ah, two, mm. I feel like, okay, I feel like it's either B or C because, because they're both like calling the set method on this thing versus passing this thing as a as arguments or parameters so it's either b or c dot set or dot two set well there are two options here that say two set so i'm going to go with this one it has to be that one okay we're on the last question already what is the purpose of self keyword when defining or call oh no self is that like this in in java i i don't even know what this in java does to be honest but <laughs> Self, what is self, 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 self? To the instance whose method was called, first to the class that was inherited. Okay, I feel like D definitely doesn't make sense. Mm. So you use the self keyword when you're calling methods on an instance of an object. So that would make sense to refer to the instance. Self means that no other arguments are required. Mm. No, nah, that doesn't sound logical. Self refers to the class that was inherited from to create the object. I feel like it refers to the instance of first the instance because if you're referring to yourself, you're referring to your instance. <laughs> okay, I don't even know. I'm just gonna put that there. Let's see if we passed. I feel like we didn't. I don't think we did. Why is this not working? Something went wrong. <laughs> Refresh this page. Hello, LinkedIn, hello, refresh, what the heck, it restarted. So I'm not really sure what just happened. I submitted the quiz and then an error page popped up and they didn't even tell me if I passed or not, but I'm going to assume I failed. I probably did fail because I was just guessing every single question. Um, but that's okay because this was just for fun. I was just trying to see if I could pass um, even though I don't know anything about Python. But if you know Python, then you can let me know what my actual score was in the comments down below. I'm gonna hope that I got at least five out of 15. If I get more than half of them right, if I get at least eight out of 15, that would be an achievement. But I probably got maybe like a couple of them correct. So that was me attempting a Python quiz as a complete Python noob 
Let me know if you want to see more videos where I try out these tests and quizzes without any experience in these languages. And yeah, hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you on the next one.